Oxytocin has been dubbed the love hormone for good reason. But did you know it can also relieve pain and toggle your memory too? Today we're going to talk about some cool facts about this amazing hormone and how you can help your brain to release more of it. You know those warm and fuzzy feelings you get when you cuddle a puppy, hug your friend, or kiss your partner? That's oxytocin at work. You may already have heard of oxytocin, what people have called the love hormone, the cuddle hormone, or even the moral molecule. This is because oxytocin has been in the headlines, gaining a reputation for making people more trusting, generous, and even more love. It is a neuropeptide, meaning that it is a protein-like molecule your brain cells use to communicate with each other. Oxytocin is also a hormone, meaning that the brain releases it into the bloodstream to communicate with the rest of the body. Clearly, this little brain chemical has some big jobs. It plays a role in sex, childbirth, bonding, social interaction, emotions, and many other functions important to us mammals. Our brains produce it naturally, but there's also synthetic oxytocin that is sometimes used therapeutically. Either way, oxytocin seems to not only nudge us toward more pro-social behavior, it can also play tricks on our minds. So let's take a look at some ways that this complicated brain chemical affects the way we feel and act, and how we can maybe coax the brain to release more of it for those warm, fuzzy feelings. So one thing we know is that oxytocin probably helps people to bond through more openness, more trust, and even more generosity. Oxytocin got its glowing reputation as the love hormone from the evidence that it seems to help us be more pro-social and more connected with others. For example, one really fascinating study found that when male college students got a dose of oxytocin from a nasal spray, they were more willing to share their emotions about a painful memory with a total stranger than participants who got just a placebo spray. People not only seem to trust strangers more with their emotions, but also with their money when they get a dose of oxytocin. A separate study had participants play an investment game where they could entrust any amount of their money tokens to another participant, a, a trustee. Those who sniffed an oxytocin spray were much more likely to let the trustee hang on to their tokens. Most of this group handed over most or all of their money. In contrast, those who only got a placebo spray were less willing to trust a stranger. Only about one-fifth of them handed over all of their tokens. Now what about straight up giving money to a stranger? Oxytocin might make a person more generous too. Yet another study found that when people got an oxytocin nasal spray, they shared a whopping 80% more money with a total stranger than people who did not get that spray. So, does this mean that we all should be walking around dosing ourselves and each other with oxytocin sprays? If all the traders on Wall Street got a sniff with their morning coffees, would the trading floor be less cutthroat? It may not be that simple. There have also been studies that fail to find the same results. And none of these sensational studies can tell us about oxytocin's effects in daily life or in the long run. Plus, we should always be careful about study findings that seem just a little too good to be true. So for now, I would say that things are looking promisingly warm and fuzzy for oxytocin. But the science is not quite rock solid enough yet that we should be just going around sticking oxytocin sprays up everyone's nose. And besides, oxytocin is complicated. Not all of its effects are perfectly positive because another interesting thing we know about it is that oxytocin has complicated effects on memory. It's possible that oxytocin can actually impair memory. A study published around the same time as the trust study I just told you about found that when people got a dose of oxytocin spray, they performed worse on a word recall test than people who just got a placebo spray. Does this mean oxytocin makes us more forgetful? 
it might depend on your attachment style. This refers to your pattern of bonding with other people, including the way you deal with trust, dependence, and intimacy. A recent study found that if your attachment style is more emotionally independent, that is, you find depending on others uncomfortable, oxytocin actually improves your ability to learn and recall a list of words. But oxytocin had a detrimental effect on memory for people who were more willing to depend on others. What's that about? Hmm. In any case, these two studies were only looking at short-term learning and recall. What about the long run? Oxytocin redeems itself here. We already know that too much stress is harmful to the hippocampus, a brain area that is indispensable to memory formation. This is true for us and for rats. But if a stressed out rat got oxytocin spray, it seemed to protect the brain cells in their hippocampus, which helps their memory health in the long run. So that's promising. And there is even better news. Oxytocin may be helpful for physical pain relief. First, it's interesting to know that people with chronic pain, like those with fibromyalgia, naturally have lower levels of oxytocin circulating in their blood. The lower their oxytocin level, the higher they rate their pain, stress, and depression. And even among healthy people, those with lower blood levels of oxytocin had lower pain tolerance. So scientists became curious about whether giving people oxytocin would decrease their pain levels or pain sensitivity. And it did, specifically for those with chronic migraine, irritable bowel syndrome, chronic back pain, and even cancer pain. For people without pain disorders, oxytocin made them better able to tolerate acute pain. The really amazing thing is that oxytocin potentially not only works directly on the brain's pain processing areas, but also indirectly decreases suffering by relieving depression and anxiety that's related to the pain. This is because oxytocin has many different effects on the central nervous system. By working through both physiological and psychological channels, oxytocin may be able to ease that vicious spiral that people get into when their pain makes them feel hopeless and anxious, which in turn worsens the pain. So how can you naturally get more oxytocin into your life? Even though oxytocin is complicated and the flashy headlines about its magic should be taken with a grain of salt, it's still safe to say that it's a generally helpful chemical for our health and happiness. Should we all be going around sniffing oxytocin sprays? Well, not so fast. The oxytocin products that you can buy online claim all sorts of magical benefits, but the research really hasn't tested how and whether they work. There is also no regulation of these sprays, so, you know, I have a rule against huffing substances that are not specifically prescribed by a doctor. But worry not, we can get doses of oxytocin in natural ways. And here are some things you can do to get more of that goodness flowing in your bloodstream. First, hug and cuddle. Comforting physical touch is a sure way to fire up the oxytocin, whether that's between parents and children, between couples, and of course, between humans and dogs. So get your cuddle on. Another way is to have sex or love yourself. Sexual pleasure is one of the most effective ways to get a big shot of oxytocin. Whether you're with a partner or helping yourself, oxytocin can skyrocket with orgasm. Bonus points for women who have multiple orgasms. You can also watch an emotional movie. When we feel empathy towards others, we're putting ourselves emotionally in their shoes. A research study showed that inducing empathy by watching emotional video clips raised people's oxytocin levels, which in turn led them to be more generous. Might I recommend the first five minutes of Up for a potential boost? And last but not least, you can give birth and breastfeed. So these are obviously not options for everyone, but if you happen to be planning on giving birth in the future, you get to look forward to that rush of oxytocin that you'll get in the process. 
this huge oxytocin release does everything from causing uterine contractions, which starts the process of birthing the baby, to getting the body ready for breastfeeding. The oxytocin will also help you bond with your baby and generally give you a warm, glowing feeling. So, go out and get your cuddle on, pet a dog, enjoy some sexual pleasure, watch a nice movie with lots of emotions. I hope your week is filled with lots of oxytocin, lots of warm and fuzzies. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next week for a happier, healthier mind. Bye.